Okay. It was illegal to make your own salt. The British passed a law in 1882 that made it illegal for anybody in India to make their own salt. It was a criminal offense to make it. You were only allowed to buy it, and you were only allowed to buy it from the government as a monopoly seller. You had to buy your salt at a government depot, and salt was taxed really heavily. Almost 50 years after the salt tax law was passed, Mahatma Gandhi chose the salt tax as the basis for a protest against British rule in India. Everybody needed salt. Everybody hated this stupid rule that only served to make money for Britain off the backs of regular Indian people. And so Gandhi, in 1930, he led a 24-day march from his ashram uh, to the sea. And when he got to the sea, he defiantly made salt, thus freaking out the whole British Empire and delighting and inspiring Indians everywhere who basically treated this as a starting gun to not only start making their own salt and defying that stupid, expensive rule, but also to disobey British rule more broadly. The Salt March. It was the first of many, but in that first month, 1930, what started as Mahatma Gandhi and 80 other marchers ended up with 80,000 people being arrested. And the police attacking people and the movement for Indian independence not only being catalyzed, but being dramatized to the world and for the British public back at home as something that meant British police thousands of miles away were beating peaceful unarmed people in the streets for the crime of boiling seawater to get salt. But you can't say they weren't warned. Check this out. Before he started the salt march, Mahatma Gandhi wrote to the British ruler of India, wrote to the viceroy, and told him that he didn't really want to do this thing, but he felt like he might have to. Fair warning. March 2nd, 1930, dear friend, before embarking on civil disobedience and taking the risk I have dreaded to take all these years, I would again approach you to find a way out. In this letter, Gandhi makes his case for what's wrong with British rule in India. He says, quote, the conviction is growing deeper and deeper in me that nothing but unadulterated nonviolence can check the organized violence of the British government. Many think nonviolence is not an active force. My experience shows that nonviolence can be an intensely active force. It's my purpose to set in motion that force against the organized violence of British rule.